Okay. Good afternoon or evening. Welcome to actually the last uh, keynote of the Capture All conference program, which takes place within the play stream of the conference program. So we divided the conference program into these three streams, work, life, play, this year to deal with the different key aspects of Capture All. So, yes, I'm Christopher Gansing, Artistic Director of <laughs> Transmediale, and next to me is Daphne Dragona, curator who has been working both on the exhibition and the conference program this year. And uh, actually, I will hand over to Daphne to introduce to you in full the keynote with uh, Mackenzie Work and the moderation by Ruth Catlow. I'd like to thank our supporters for the conference, year, uh, conference program this year, as has been actually over many years, the Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung. A great thanks to their support. And Daphne, would you like to take over? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Hello, good evening, and welcome to our keynote of Capture All Play. Uh, our keynote today is of course part of our play stream, which particularly looks into uh, the role of play in uh, algorithmic society, which means that we are particularly looking into the functionality and the productivity of play, uh, locating how it has become a facilitator for today's quantification, datification and commodification that we are discussing in this year's conference. And um, we felt that it seems like uh, playful technologies and participatory structures today are more and more used to render personal information traceable, uh, social relationships exploitable, and behavioral patterns recognizable. Uh, so this is how the question comes up. Whatever, whatever happened to play? And can we rediscuss and explore its cultural and political role? So it is indeed a great pleasure to have with us uh, Mackenzie Work here tonight, together with uh, Ruth Catlow as a moderator and a respondent. Uh, I will briefly introduce Ruth, who is an artist, curator, ad academic and activist from London. Her work and general interest lies in commons-based peer production and emanc emancipatory network cultures, practices and poetics. Together with Mark Garrett, Ruth is the co-founder and artistic director of Featherfield, a non-profit organization for arts, technology, and social change. Uh, with Mark, they are especially interested in bringing together artists, technologies, and activists for the development of collaborative projects which strengthen and the expressive and democratic potential of a shared technosocial landscape. So thank you very much. Please welcome Mackenzie Wark and Ruth Cutlow. Hello. Um, so the theme for this stream is play, and I've enjoyed myself so much as an um, audience member for this topic so far over the week that it comes as really a bit of a shock to my system to find myself now at work on the theme of play. And I did at first think that there's something kind of profoundly unplayful about this auditorium. You want to stand here. <laughs> um, and it demonstrates that the, that the architecture of this space, uh, it demonstrates some of the obstacles that we face in creating conditions for more free play, for mucking about and for improvisation. Um, I did think about asking uh, Daphne and Christopher to organize stunt doubles for me and Mackenzie so they could kind of somersault and cartwheel through, around the theater a few times before disappearing in a puff of smoke and then we could appear and then suddenly, okay, so then we'd be in the experience of play. And uh, this lone speaker in the spotlight thing places uh, this human being under some pressure to perform a kind of I'm expected to perform an internal processing of an argument to demonstrate skill and to really accomplish something, which is the pressure of which is increased by the fact that I know and have really a great amount of respect for many, many people in this room, and so I want to do a good job. 
Um, so, as I was preparing for this privileged role as keynote respondent to Mackenzie, I uh, discovered an online exhibition uh, featured on the website for the 2006 book Game Scenes, Art in the Age of Video Games, a great book edited by Matteo Bitanti and Domenico Quaranta. Now, uh, Game Face, featured on the website, is a selection of photographic portraits of video game players uh, created by artists and professional photographers, and I really strongly recommend you go and have a look. And on these faces, we see the gestures and facial expressions of players which depict intense concentration, focus, determination, which sometimes looks like agony. And damage in the case of some really stunning images by Yokozi, who we heard speak yesterday. Uh, the glow of the game screen illuminates the faces of the players, and I saw this moment mirrored there, and I thought, okay, well, maybe this is some kind of contemporary play. And looking at those images, then, in the context of everything I've heard over the last few days, reminded me that the capture-all logic is at full strength when more of us focus our entire attentions on our work or our social responsibilities or pleasures in a, in, within range of a number of diverse and increasingly discrete devices, cameras and sensors, through which we unwittingly squirt torrents of data into the cloud. And as we have heard, new industries are proliferating to put machines and algorithms to work to, ma to manipulate this data with greater granularity. And so to generate new demand for data through what I've just heard um, Mushon describe in a previous panel as Panopticon 2. So this is where we are surveying each other. But also to generate value for the people who most of us will never meet and who I dare not hope have my best interests at heart. And these machines and alg algorithms are uh, at work to turn work into play, play into work, and to make one set of things often prove another set of things. Mackenzie's talk takes for discussion two works of gamer theory. I'm not going to give you a whole talk for you, I promise. Um, <laughs> uh, How to Get Rid of Homelessness by Matteo Bitanti and Vincent Ocasler's Magna Santi both of which take SimCity as their platform and inspiration. Uh, SimCity, as most of you will know, is a very popular city-building simulation, first published in uh, 1989 and since reversioned many times and sold and played around the world. In SimCity, the player acts as the mayor and every choice he or she makes affects their city and depending on the game version, their region and the world within the game. According to the feminist game artist and scholar Mary Flanagan, who co-wrote an earlier book with Bitanti on The Sims, which was a very successful spin-off of SimCity, Will Wright and the team who created the games are adamant that these games are neutral, uh, which which kind of created a, a shock within me to kind of read this, and that this is something that we're going to come back to. And for all that I've heard here so far about uh, asymmetric power and uh, data in our capture culture, the asymmetry of a system totally controlled by a single mayor is really very extreme. Uh, okay, so uh, these are things that we will come back to later. So now to introduce Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie Walk teaches at the New School for Social Research and Eugene Lang College, the New School for Liberal Arts in New York City. Uh, it's 11 years since he published A Hacker Manifesto. Divided into 17 chapters, each offers a short numbered series of short numbered paragraphs that mimic the epigrammic style of Guy Debord's The Society of the Spectacle. In this influential book, he describes the hacker class as the producers of a new kind of intellectual property and a new vectoralist class who attempt to impose scarcity previously associated with physical realms in the immaterial realm in order to own and profit from it. 
Walk argues that the vectoral class cannot control the intellectual property world, but only in its commodity form, waging an intensive struggle to dispossess hackers of their intellectual property. So, Michelle Bowens calls a hacker manifesto, and I quote, a brilliant historical text that correctly describes the period before peer production, end quote. And th this is an interesting provocation that, I, again, I think we'll come back to later. So, Walk has since published, among, among others, a series of critically engaging books, such as Gamer Theory, which describes and perhaps foretells how everyday lives were and would come to be further infiltrated by the competitive game-like mechanisms which have been the topic of so many discussions this week. More recently, he's written about the Situationist International and in Molecular Red, Theory for the Anthropocene, which is just out, uh, he went looking for new ancestors from the scientific field to rethink what from the cultural past might be useful now in order to take seriously contemporary scientific claims that these times are not like any other time. And I'm going to hand over. Okay.